You know, I believe music should not only be listened to, but it should be felt. And music should inspire, uh, console, um, energize you, or calm you down to give you a certain emotion that causes a certain reaction. And with me, hip hop touched me in such a way that it was important that I participated. A lot of people ask me, Kevin, do you know a hit record? Do you know uh, when it comes on that that record's going to be a hit? I, you, you know, I know the qualities of a hit record. I know the qualities of somebody who has it. But to say there's a crystal ball, but to say that every time I say it's a hit, it's going to become a hit. No, I didn't dance to records. I didn't jump in pools and jumped over tables for records and it didn't sell anything. Uh, but I tell you, the record was special because it touched me in a certain way. So really, let's say what's a hit. Is a hit something that sells or a hit something that inspires you? You know, what's going on by Marvin Gaye inspires us. It had us look back. It might not have sold as much as Thriller, but it meant to that period of time so much to our culture. And so some records are just meant to be the narrative to our times. And some records are meant to sell a lot of fucking records. Well, in these day and age, a lot of streams. So to me, I, I wouldn't say I know a hit record. I would say I know the qualities. Uh, I know the components of what should make a hit record. But I'll leave that up to you guys to say what's a smash or not. You know, times have changed. You know, we went from eight tracks to cassettes to CDs to MP3s to downloads and now to streaming. Uh, I believe. Uh, consumption is at an all-time high. And I think every artist in building the audience should release as much music as they can. You don't want people just to buy into one record. You don't want people just to buy into one hook. You want people to buy into you. And what better way for them to know you than your music. So I would encourage all of you, build your audience by putting out content. You should put out seven pieces of content for every song that you put out. You should really go and make your own movie instead of just thinking, oh, I'm gonna put a single and I'm gonna blow up and I'm gonna go on tour. It doesn't work like that today. There's 40,000 records getting uploaded to all the streaming services every day. So what's gonna make you different? It has to be your work ethic, it has to be your content, it has to be the quality of your music, and it has to be your truth. You know, a lot of people uh, back in the day will tell you that they made music because they loved it. They make music because uh, it was an opportunity for them to express yourself. But what that turned into is a small business. And now it's become big business. But you have to realize that you're not just an artist. You are a businessman or woman. You are the CEO of your life, the CEO of your copyright, the CEO of everything that you do. So yes, you have to worry about the toilet paper. And yes, you have to worry about the bills. And yes, you have to worry about the tour schedule. And yes, you have to worry about the tour budget. And yes, you have to worry about not going over budget with your video. All those things. A CEO and an artist is a very special person. So you might need a crew of people. You might need your friend who's an accountant major. You might need your other friend who's a photographer. You might need your other friend who's actually a marketer. So you can be independent, but not alone. Put some smart people around you and go out there and make the world know your name. When I started in the music business uh, as an artist, I always had this knack for business. Uh, I didn't want to be in the music business. I wanted to be in the business of music. And things happened to me to push me that way. But, you know, I was always in that mindset. Actually, I actually used to carry a briefcase uh, around with me just so people knew I was serious about business. I don't know what was in the briefcase but I wanted people to really think I was a businessman. Uh, so, you know, going through life as a, a entrepreneur, um, when I started to work for uh, Def Jam, I became an entrepreneur. I was inside the organization, but the spirit of me being an independent, the spirit of, let me look at Def Jam as part of my portfolio of KWL Enterprises. I wasn't working for somebody. I was still working for myself, but I was providing my services for somebody. I always thought like an entrepreneur. I always ask the questions, why and why not? I always push the envelope, well, why do you have to do it this way? Why not do it this way? So I believe there is an opportunity for people to be artists, uh, entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, executives, marketers, accountants, but you have to be the best at what you do. Here's the big question. 
Am I an entrepreneur, an artist, or an executive? The reality is this, you are everything you need to be to be successful. See, I'm a driver, a passenger, the gas getter, the car washer, the tire changer. I'm whatever my crew and my team needs me to be to be successful. So don't just hold a title, have a vision. Have a vision of where you want to go and by any means necessary, put a great team together to achieve your success. A lot of people said, Kevin, you know, how do you guys continue to be the number one independent? You know, what makes you special? What's your secret sauce or where's that magic button? Uh, great artists and great people. Great artists and great people. The vision is for people to be great. It happens and it's executed by great artists and great people. You know what's great about having great people? Uh, they all want to be great. They all want to have that great idea. They all want to come up with that great campaign. They all, all want to turn that no into a yes. They all want to get that next playlist. They all want to produce that next great. They all want to find that next great artist. And when you push for greatness throughout an organization, you come up with the savage challenge. You come up with the one of scopes. You come up with these things that uh, actually uh, get us nominated for Webby Awards and all these digital uh, um, opportunities that uh, we've had over the course uh, of the last three years. We don't settle. We don't settle just to put a record, have, have the uh, cannon effect, oh, boom, here's everything. We, we place things and properly go there. I know a lot of you might have remembered the Freestyle 50 Challenge. Uh, this was something that came out of a, a conversation with um, uh, my friends at Verizon. It was one of their biggest performing campaigns you know, ever. You guys might have uh, remember the birth of a new nation, uh, our, our new artist you know, tours. You guys might have remember back in the day when we did the Def Jam fighting games, uh, or Def Comedy Jam, or Def Poetry Jam, or Fat Farm, or Baby Fat. All these things came out of us daring to be different us providing our culture with a service, but always thinking how can we be great and how can we always use what we have to share with the world. You, you know what's so funny? You can imagine how many songs I listen to in a day. Take it a week, take it a month. You can imagine how many ideas I'm pitched. Um, what makes that idea get my eye or ear or my money? Um, it's an idea that fills a void. Um, it's an uh, idea or a song that makes me feel uh, a, a certain way. And I would challenge each of you, once you have something special, I mean, that you is deemed special, I mean, so special that you're not even sure you want to share it with the world. Don't put it out just to put it out. Put it out with a plan, have a strategy, talk about who your audience is, how you're gonna super serve that audience. What are some like-minded tests that have happened prior to you? You know, believe me, if you have gold, people will find it. Just like if you have trash, the trash can will find it. Radio, streaming, touring, um, <laughs> whoever downloads, vinyl, all these things make up a great ecosystem for you to be discovered, for you to change your life, and for you to share your music with the world. Can you have one without the other? I know some artists that don't have radio, but selling millions and billions of streams. I know some artists that selling millions and billions of streams, but can't sell a ticket to a tour, can't sell a t-shirt. I don't think it's one particular way that it's done. What I would like to tell each of you, don't just sell a song to your fan. Sell you, sell everything about you. Make your show the greatest show on earth. Make your song, the, make your campaign the greatest campaign. Dress like you mean it. Walk like you mean it, talk like you mean it. And if there's an opportunity for you to have radio come in or get the top playlist on a DSAP, make sure you don't take it for granted. Go above and beyond to make your success part of the ecosystem. See, I believe there's a time and place for everything. I remember I handed my first flyer and then I had to make up hundreds and hundreds of flyers. And then I made my first cassette or my first piece of vinyl. And then I handed out hundreds and hundreds of pieces of vinyl. And then I remember, fast forward to 2013, that first playlist that Fetty Wap got on. 
being number one on a playlist. Then seven, eight songs on a playlist. And at that same time, I remember that first spin at the club. The DJ played the record. I remember the first, you know, play on a radio station. I remember it playing 50 times on a radio station. And I remember having, instead of one million in audience, I remember having a hundred million in audience. And then I remember uh, awarding Fetty Wap with a diamond plaque for Trap Queen. It all started with that one flyer, that one playlist, that one DJ, that one spin. It's an ecosystem and make sure you put yourself in it. But I believe if you truly want scalability, you can't have 100% by yourself. You have to have people who are as invested as in you for the upside as you grow. You know, I've worked with all kinds of artists, entrepreneurs, creators in my lifetime. And someone asked me the other day, well, Kev, what is the common thread? What, what do all of them have? They all got something different. <laughs> they all have that it factor in them. Some of them are business men or women that happen to be creative. Some of them are so creative that they let other people handle their business. So I don't believe it's one common thread that says each of these artists are the same because of this. But I truly have to tell you, a true artist, a true entrepreneur has an unwavering faith about their vision. And it's nothing that will deter them or get them to walk away from what they believe. Now, will they adjust? Yes. Will they evolve? Yes. But will they not believe in who they are, what they are, and why they are? Nah, not, not the great ones. If you're watching this video and you're at home figuring out what's your next move, how you can get to me, shouldn't be worried about getting to me. You should be worried about building your audience, getting that next fan, getting that next show, getting that next playlist. Because trust me, I'm gonna find you. If you got your city on lock, if you got your town on lock or your high school on lock or your block on lock, trust me, I'm gonna find you because I need great partners, but I need great partners who are great without me. I'm here to make them greater. I'm here to scale us around the world. So do you trust me? You don't have to look for me. We're going to find you.